Welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. We continue talking football because we are at the business end of the Jamaica Premier League, sponsored by Ray Nephew, with the quarterfinals on the way. Following the conclusion of the regular season, Sports Max selected the best 11 players of uh, the regular season. One of the persons who helped to select the squad, Chris Taylor, and he joins us now. And, and, <laughs> and he joins us now. Let's have a quick look at that, at that squad. Uh, Shaquan Davis, who was on In Case You Missed It with Mariah Ramarack a couple of weeks ago. In goal, the defenders, Alton Lewis, Stephen Young, Giovanni Leng, Sula McCalla. In midfield, Nathan Thomas, Alex Marshall, Jaheim Thomas, Devonte Campbell, Jabane Bran, and Justin Dunn. That's the 11 selected by the Sports Max team for the regular season. And uh, we are now going to have some discussion on that. And uh, joining us, Chris Taylor, a regular commentator on the Ray and Nephew Jamaica Premier League. Normally, he would be in a Liverpool red shirt. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure what why, he, why he's wearing a, a Liverpool red shirt today, but... <laughs> Um, maybe he can tell us why not. What happened, Chris? I'm singing the blues today. Oh, you're singing the blues. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very good answer. Um, um, the, the, the squad that we just put up there, um, a Sports Max selection, I know our producer... Had a lot of say. Ramon Stewart had a, <laughs> had a lot to say about this 11. Maybe, Lige, I get the impression that you weren't um, intimately involved with this 11. Um, do you like it? I like many aspects of it. Yes. Uh, I, I think they, 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 for me there would be a couple changes in there. I think the back line certainly a solid one. I think a lot of those persons pick, pick themselves. I thought throughout the season we saw some good centre back pairings, especially some good defensive work. I thought if I was to pick a back three, I thought the best defensive back three, and a lot of the top teams this season have played a back three, would have been Cavaliers. Right. But with that pick there, Stephen Young, excellent season for Portmore amongst the goals as well. He's been solid. Uh, Portmore boasts one of the best defences. I think himself and Giovanni Ling, who out of that three-man back line of Cavalier, Ming, King and Ling, has been the most consistent in terms of games played throughout the season and so on. Of course, Richard King has gone overseas, national duties, and Kyle Ming for a period was injured as well, but Ling right throughout, even when Cavalier were having their best time in terms of clean sheets and wins in a row, he was a part of that back line. Shaquan Davis, Nine clean sheets, equal with the most for the season. Uh, his first national call-up. Mount Pleasant, the best defensive record. I think he justifies his position between the sticks. Um, excellent season. Well, we could talk the wing-backs. I mean, Alton Lewis, obviously, yes, Justin Dunn for Tivoli has scored the most goals this season. But Alton Lewis has arguably been one of their players of the season, for sure. Um, goals and assists in that right-back position. He's played centre-back. He's played right midfield. Um, ever ready to go down the flanks, beautiful deliveries from the dead ball. He's been a beast, his nickname is Alkaline, and he has been wow. very smooth um, right throughout the season. Sule Makala, uh, best goal scoring season for him, six goals already playing in the wing-back position. And if you understand how Mount Pleasant play, they, they almost morph from a, a back three into, or back four into a back three, and Sule Makala will go down the flank, sometimes comes into a defensive midfield role. And to think he's at the back end of his career now and still producing the kind of stats that he has, has a few assists to go with that as well, I think three assists. So he has had an outstanding season. I think that the back five then, pretty easy to pick. Yes. Uh, I think um, outstanding season for them. In the middle of the park now, it gets a little bit more interesting. Uh, yeah. For me, that would have one of the changes for me. I think Jaheim Thomas, yes, they call him national youngster for Arnett. Very energetic player, very exciting young player. Um, five goals on the season, he's had about four assists as well. And I think one of the emerging players of the Jamaica Premier League justifies his spot. Some may argue that Nathan Thomas um, has been responsible for the resurgence of the defence line of Tivoli this season. They have moved from 11th to 3rd under Jerome Waite. I think he has done a brilliant job, arguably the coach of the season so far. Yeah. Or undoubtedly the coach of the season so, so far. far. Uh, Nathan Thomas has played in front of that back, back three. Uh, very well. The last game would not necessarily be a great illustration of that after giving away a penalty. But I think his, his position would be challenged by one Marlon Martin, who I thought has had an excellent season as well for Arnett. Didn't do well in the, in the last game, game either. Yeah. Yes, right. yes, yes, yes. Uh, coming back from injury. Yes. But he is the reason. And, and, and when, when Marlon doesn't play in that Arnett team, they look a lot more vulnerable at the back. I think when he's there, his ability to break up play and see. Neither of them very good going forward. 
um, never, not really creative either, but in terms of breaking up play, I think if Martin was picked in that and Thomas was left out, many wouldn't argue. Right. I think the two of them have been excellent in those two spots. But for me, in the middle, I would not go Alex Marshall. I agree that Alex Marshall, entertaining, had a pretty good game last time out, but I don't think his stats support his pick as well. And I would be pulling one out of the hat here. I would actually be going for Daniel Green in that um, attacking midfield role. Mm -hmm. A new role for him under Mount Pleasant, because you're used to seeing Daniel Green out wide, came in halfway through the season, seven goals, four assists. Yeah. And in a period where Mount Pleasant was falling away, I thought, a bit um, towards December, January, he came in and they had a brilliant end to the season, back on top comfortably. And he was one of those players that brought it together because um, so versatile, can play in the wide areas, good distributor of the ball, played in that attacking midfield role, scores goals and brings other players into play. So I think he is one of the big reasons why Mount Pleasant ended the season on top and so comfortably as yeah, well. And, and because he was out, he had been in Vietnam playing some football in, in Vietnam. Good to see him coming back to the Mount Pleasant setup and slotting in so effectively. Yeah, so yeah. for me, uh, having, as I said, you know, I would go one defensive midfielder in Thomas or, 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 or Martin. But for me, with Jaheim Thomas, I would play Daniel Green alongside him. Right. Yeah, when and you, not Marshall. Yeah, when, when you say that, I look at the 11 and I'm not seeing that many Mount Pleasant players in, in that 11. And Mount Pleasant have been the best team in the regular mm -hmm. season. But I think their squad is so deep and they have so many options That's that a lot of their in. top players don't play enough. And so even maybe... So and maybe if they use to... the stats to pick their team and not, not just the performances? No, I, I, a lot of the players in there justify their place by yeah. performance. I just think I agree with Lance that Mount Pleasant, because of the depth of squad, there's a lot of rotation. So yes. it's more of a team effort. When you yes. look at their defence line, best defence line... The goalkeeper is the only Mount Pleasant and player in this, in this 11 that no, we have. No, Sule McCullough is in McCullough, yeah. And yeah. I'm saying Daniel Green as well, so that would yeah. bring a third yes, player. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but, but and if you Oh, Devontae Campbell there as yeah. well. Devontae, Devontae Campbell, Campbell is there. On the left side, yes. Right. Who, yeah. to me, shouldn't be there. I don't think... Devontae Campbell scored two goals this season. He had one assist. Mm -hmm. um, yes, his talent and ability would, would get you excited watching him. He's good on the eye. Yeah. But if you look at his end product or the productivity so far this season, not good enough for me to get... So you're, you're suggesting here, Chris so Taylor... two changes. That, that this 11 that we have put out as a Sportsmax 11 doesn't follow the... The, 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 the rules of like an NBA selection because statistics and numbers production weigh very heavily on those things. And yes. you're saying that in some instances, we haven't gone that route with this 11. No, in some in the of case of like Devontae Campbell. Eye test. Right, I uh, test and yes. not statistics. And I'm I don't think, I, in that position for me, it has to be Jalmaro Calvin. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, he's been. Cavalier, automatic spot, top two. He's the most consistent scorer in the Jamaica Premier League. He scored 11 goals, but he scored in 11 different matches. No double goal performances. Yes. No other player scored in as many matches. He's a 20-year-old he's a Antiguan, isn't Antigua, he? Antigua, right. Yeah. Antigua National. Well, he's, well <laughs> he, he's a dual citizen. Um, but, you want to claim him, Chris? Eh? No, no, no. no. He's, he's, uh, he was born here. He, was actually, so he, he actually is Jamaican as well. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. So opted to play for Antigua and Barbuda because of opportunity yeah. and not necessarily just nationality. Yeah. Um, but Calvin, rejuvenate, he is, I mean, under Rudolph Speed, he's, been, he's a new player, rejuvenated player this season. As I said, 11 games he scored in, and many of the wins that Cavalier, Cavalier have quite a few 1 0 wins. He and scored he a winner. Difference. Yeah, he has been like three or four times a match winner. Yeah. So for me, and Cavalier getting in that top two, heavily reliant on him when other players had gone overseas, aka Dwayne Atkinson and some of the others. Yeah. Um, he must be one of those um, players in the top three for me um, himself. There's no way Campbell could get in ahead of him. Or even if you wanted to look at an Andre Fletcher, for example, from Waterhouse, who had an amazing season out wide. Um, a couple braces and a hat-trick as well. So didn't score in as many games, but when he scores, he scores. Um, but I think Calvin, Dunn and Brian would be my front three. And I would replace Marshall with, with Daniel Green. Mm. But I agree with you that Mount Pleasant... You, you look at their team and, as you say, a heavy rotation. So a lot of good performances, but more yeah. of a, a, a team effort. What about Kimone Bailey? Yeah. He's, he's, he's a, he's a game-changer with his magical play, and he has had some brilliant goals. Good season for Bailey. Um, unfortunately for him, picked up an injury in the mid-part of the season, and it kept him out for a while. But five goals, four assists for him this season. This has probably been, Well, not probably. This has been his best return as a, as a, as a senior player. 
Um, I remember him when he went to the final with Dumble Holden um, a couple of seasons ago. The thing is, not everyone can make the team. Um, Only Bailey, 11. Bailey, Bailey 11, right. And Bailey, Bailey plays mostly this season in the wide area. So who does he get in ahead of for, you, for, for me? Yeah, he, he can't get in ahead of the, 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 the front three with, the, with Calvin or, say, I don't know why. And in the middle three... Yeah, but, uh, but, but, but you, you, you don't like Devonte Campbell's pick. No. So if I'm hearing you correctly... You could put Bailey over Devontae Campbell. If no, you, but if he has somebody else. No, I else. have Calvin. I don't yeah. think any of them can get in ahead of Calvin. He likes We're that. talking no. about an 11 goal man this season who was partly responsible for his team being in the second position at the Premier League after 26 games. I don't know. Up for the most consistent scorer in the Premier League, I don't know how he could be discounted. So for me, Campbell was not even a thought, honestly. I mean, not trying to be mean, but Campbell wasn't a thought for me based on his season. And Bailey was a thought, but I think he would more get into a second eleven. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Um, overall, though, the season has been has been good, and it's it's yes. nicely set up. We saw the first playoffs and the quarterfinal playoffs, and it's even Stephen going into the second leg. So so all to play for. Um, given what you saw in or the possibility of looking at the playoffs and so on, what they call it postseason in in in, in the USA. Um, would you think that? Uh, an overall season 11 could look different from what we are seeing with this regular season 11, given what is left to happen. Yes, because as you said, it's been a, it's been a pretty close knit season. There are a few players. I mean, if you even want to look at goal scoring, I mean, yes, Dunn is out in the lead with 16, but you have quite a few players that are say, between say 10 and 13 um, who are who are doing good things. I I think, for example, in that Port Moranet tie. I, I look at Siobhan Walsh as an X factor. Didn't play many minutes, but he's that kind of quality striker that I think could make yeah, a difference I, I for Portland. I think he's good, yeah. Um, so Arnett would have to watch themselves. I think Arnett going slight favourites to me. I think Tiffany are slight favourites. But because that, those ties are so close at one apiece, it means that the, the second leg is going to be grueling. And I think that works for Mount Pleasant and Cavalier because now you're looking at it will be a third match for those teams. And Cavalier and Mount Pleasant well rested. Um, but I'm still favoring Tivoli and Arnett to come out of that clash. But I think um, it's, it's going to be very close. And I think all teams need to show improved performances in that, in that second tie. But yes, there are other players that, that could sneak in. I, I would think, though, that maybe the back four or five are, are pretty Stay. safe as where yeah. it is. Yeah. Do you expect any changes for the Arnett Portmore fixture, the second leg that's coming up? Yes, I, I think Siobhan Walsh, once he goes through training um, unscathed, I think yeah. he will be, I think he will be, I think Portmore need him there. Because with Alex Marshall being able to, to um, um, pull the strings, he needs that kind of player to bounce things off of. And I think with that, the, the synergy between those two would cause a lot of problems in an inexperienced um, Arnett Garns backline. I think Walsh is a quality player. So Walsh, for me, definitely into the starting lineup. Um, Arnett Gardens, I, I don't see many changes, especially up front. Martin didn't look 100% fit, so I think they would want to look at that. Um, maybe a Jamon Shepard. Uh, uh, Jaheim Thomas was a little bit disappointing in the first leg. Jamon Shepard looked a bit more prepared and a bit more seasoned. Um, and, and this but is he, a realistic... He, he did have some pretty bad passes when he just came on. It took him a little while to get, the, get the pace of the game. Yeah, Jamon but Shepard, I, yeah. I, liked his, I liked his energy and the tempo of his play. Okay. Right. And, and, and I thought that that was what was needed for Arnett. And you have, we have to remember as well, it was a very good crowd at, at Sabina yeah. Park. It's an intimate setting. And the pressure of the playoffs sometimes can tell on players who are inexperienced. And I think we saw some of that. Some of the goalkeepers look nervous. Uh, so... I, I, do, I do see a, a, a teams making a couple of changes. I think Walsh would be the big change for Portmore. Um, maybe a Arboyne might not start this one. He was a little bit off. Maybe they might go for Kelsen. There's options. But Reed and, and Dixon, I thought Kahim Dixon, he is really coming of age. I think Kahim Dixon in a couple of years will be a blockbuster. I would be surprised if he remains in Jamaica. Yeah. yeah. And I, I like where he's going. To think that he's coming out of schoolboy football, yes, 39 goals. But how he has matured, he's gotten a national call up. He scored at that level. Yes. He's coming to the Premier League. He, physically, he's adapting a lot better. Scoring goals now. I, I think he's a really, really one for the future. But for the most part, you're you're comfortable with the Sports Max All Star Eleven. Yeah, I, I, I give it a seventy-five. I, I give it an eighty percent, seventy-five, eighty <laughs> percent. <laughs> um, I think majority of them uh, justify their places, but I think there are two or three key positions that I would I would go differently, but. 
credit to them as well, as you said. <laughs> yeah, he passed the eye test for the most part. Yeah, so <laughs> Devontae Campbell, for the most part, or specifically, is the is your biggest he disagreement. Wants Del Maru in. Biggest, biggest disagreement Mar is Devontae. Yes. yes, the other players, I would, as I said, Alex Marshall, um, he would not disappoint a lot of persons by seeing him in that lineup. But yeah. for me, I would do Daniel Green just based on the impact that he's had so far and his statistics as well. Yeah. So, but yes, Devonte for me is a, is I think I would actually go as far as to say I think that's a bad miss by by the Sports Max team. Oh I, I don't oh think he should have been in there. Um, Kamani, come on. But um, but hey, as I said, um, Nathan Thomas is another one. You could have gone Marlon Martin or yeah. Thomas, but Thomas has had a very good season. Yes. And, and has been integral in, in the progress of, of Tivoli Gun. So back four, though, back four or five with the keeper. Good. No changes there. Mm. All right. Well, Kimani and team, you all have some work to do. Chris is not too satisfied with <laughs> some of the decisions made. Pants, <laughs> we're going to take a break now. Yeah, Chris, yeah. thank you so much for joining us in studio. Always a pleasure. I'm um, looking forward to next week, Monday. Yes, JPL for sure. All It'll right. be exciting. Yeah, break time. <laughs>